Hello, welcome back to AE3530, System Dynamics and Vibrations. In the previous video, we started discussing mechanical elements. We looked at inertia elements, both mass and moment of inertia. We then talked about spring elements, starting with translational springs, uh, and then looked at torsional springs. We then had a discussion of linear versus nonlinear springs, and talked about hardening versus softening behavior. Uh, and then we had looked at an example of a translational spring with a cubic nonlinearity. I just wanted to add here that you can also have nonlinear rotational springs where you would have something like kt times theta cubed as an example. We then talked about damping elements and focused on discussed how they dissipate energy by generating heat instead of storing it. We looked at a what a dash bot is and discussed that as well as for, for both translation and rotation motion. And then we talked about Coulomb friction. In this video, we're going to go through nonlinear viscous damping, and then we're going to discuss how elements in parallel add together and how elements in series are inversely combined. And then we'll talk about how elements of different types cannot be simplified in series. And then we'll go into and start Newton's second law. Okay, so looking at a, a type of a nonlinear viscous damper, and this is where you take this dash pot and rather than exciting it translationally or axially, actually would be along its axis as drawn with the laser here, we're going to excite it transversely. And in this case, and I'm not going to go through any of the math here because it ends up being quite um, intense and not necessarily relevant for the class, uh, you end up with a lot of Pythagorean theorem in here, and then when you go into Taylor series approximations as well as, uh, or maybe binomial expansions, you'll end up finding that in this case the force ends up being or it can be simplified, not, not simplified, but um, truncated into a representation where you have some type of um, damping coefficient. We'll just write it as C times X squared times X dot. So now the damping becomes dependent on the displacement squared. Uh, and that's where this nonlinearity comes in. We have not only because x is squared, but because also we have x multiplied by x dot. If it was just x times x dot, that would still be nonlinear. Uh, the, the squared makes it even more nonlinear in this case. You won't need to deal with this in the class. I'm just including this for your exposure to this topic and to what nonlinearity does. Nonlinear damping does really weird things, uh, and, and it's just not a topic that we'll be able to cover here. In fact, it's, a, it's an active area of research that people are you know, exploring, and I, not a lot of progress has really been made in this area. Um, it's something that really interests me. So in this class, we're only going to uh, consider ideal dampers without any inertia or stiffness. This is, again, a good model for a system. Um, the same way we ignore stiffness or mass and, stiff, or mass and damping in like a spring element, uh, we're going to do the same thing here with damping elements. Okay, now we're going to consider how elements in parallel add together. We're going to start with parallel, meaning as shown here, we have two springs. This is called in parallel. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you see what series looks like, one after the other. And in this case, we're going to well, we're going to go through parallel first. When you have two springs in parallel, they they just add together directly. So the force is equal to will be equal to the deformation of the spring. We're measuring that in x. So it will be k1 times x plus k2 times x, or quite simply, we can write that the force is equal to the quantity k1 plus k2 times x, such that the equivalent stiffness case will be q, this is equal to k1 plus k2. They just directly add together. When you have a damper and a spring in parallel, as shown here, we again can just add the forces together, and we'll quite simply just find here that F is equal to C times X dot plus K times X, and that is the force there. No more simplification can be done. Um, I want to also note that this is true for uh, trans torsional springs and torsional dampers as well. Those things acting in parallel, you just add their forces together. If we have two dampers in parallel, it's going to be very much the same as the, the spring case. In this case, I'm missing my F, so let me add the F here. In this case, the force is equal to C1 times X dot plus C2 X dot, such that the force is equal to the quantity C1 plus C2 
times x dot, and we can write that the equivalent damping coefficient CEQ is equal to C1 plus, oops, didn't like how that plus looked, plus C2. That's our equivalent damping coefficient. Ooh, let me try and draw a better square. There. Okay, now what happens if you have elements of the same type in a series configuration? In this case, you're going to inversely combine them, is what I'm calling it. Um, okay, so let's consider this. At, as drawn here, the force is going to be the same in each spring, and that's, again, due to Newton's third law. So we'll say, add a little bullet here, the force in, or the force is the same in each spring. That means that K1 times Y is going to be equal to F because in this case we would compute the relative displacement. If I come in here and I'll just briefly add in purple or in pink a Z here. However, because Z is the ground, this is always zero. Uh, so if we compute the relative displacement for the spring K1, we'll find that it would be Y minus Z, which is zero, so K times Y. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that. And then for the second spring, we have to look at the relative displacement, and that's gonna be that K2 times X minus Y will be equal to F. What we're gonna do now is we're going to eliminate y, we'll use that first equation, just write it up here, we'll find that y must be equal to f divided by k1, we'll then substitute that into our second equation, and then what we'll end up with is that, we'll just write here, eliminating y, we will get that k2 times x minus f divided by k1, this must be equal to the force f. So then, this double arrow really just kind of means a then, so then k2 times x is going to be equal to, and here we're just expanding this out and then bringing them over on the other side, it's going to be equal to f plus k2 divided by k1 f, And then if we, we can write this as K1 over K1F plus K2 over K1F. And then we can combine these two fractions and we'll find that we get, we don't need a parenthesis, we'll get K1 plus K2 divided by K1 multiplied by F. Okay. From here, we can divide by K2, and we'll then have X is equal to something equivalent to F, or X divided by F, or F divided by, sorry, we're going to divide by K2, so we're going to end up with X divided by F. That's the inverse of a spring constant. A spring constant is a force divided by a displacement. So we know then that the equivalent, the equivalent spring constant must be equal to F, F divided by X. So the equivalent spring constant which we're going to call K sub EQ this must be is we'll say here equal to K EQ is equal to F divided by X I'm going to skip a little bit of algebra here, but I'm going to try and talk you through it. What we're going to do here is we're going to multiply by K1 on both sides of this equation here. We're going to use, let me let that laser disappear. We're going to use this portion and the portion all the way at the far left. We're going to multiply both sides by K1 to eliminate that fraction. Then we're going to divide by K1 plus K2. We'll have K2 and K1 in the numerator. We will then go and... Uh, 
do some algebra, which we're going to skip here uh, just to save some time. And what we'll find is that this ends up being equal to 1 divided by 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And I'm going to rewrite that fraction. Or we find that 1 over k equivalent is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. Okay, what I would like you to do for your classwork grade from this lecture is to go ahead and show, show me that this relationship is true. I want you to do the algebra that I discussed and demonstrate that this relationship is correct. You'll scan that and upload as a PDF to Canvas. Okay, let's go on and talk about how elements of different types. Uh, and then we'll actually end this video and I'll, in the next video we'll start Newton's second law. Okay, so if you have elements of different type in series like this where we have a damper plus a spring in series, these elements cannot be simplified in series. And so as a result here, the force is going to be equal to C times Y dot plus k times x minus y. So we, there is no relationship between x and y that we can specify to simplify this equation. In fact, when you have elements like this, you end up with a first order ordinary differential equation that describes their, the behavior of the system. Okay. All right. As I mentioned, we're going to stop here. Uh, I'd like you to go ahead and submit your the work for showing that the relationship that I'm going to write here, this relationship, showing that that is correct. Go ahead and submit that as a PDF on Canvas. Uh, and then based on what you find, we will, uh, if people have questions or run into problems, we will provide a solution as needed. All right, in the next video, we're going to start and go through Newton's second law.